Okay, you may be shocked by these words, but I ask you to bear with me. We're going to look at the Romans reading today. I sometimes struggle to believe that God really loves me. I can be tempted to feel a sense of failure and self-condemnation. It's relatively easy to believe that God loves somebody else, but it's much harder to believe that God loves me. I didn't write those words. They were written by the Reverend Nikki Gumbel, who some of you may know has spearheaded the Alpha Course for many years. This is a man who has a deep and committed Christian faith. And yet even he has his days when he wonders, does God really love me? And I'm here again to share with you the words that St. Paul wrote, which will leave us in no doubt about God's love for us. Because sometimes I wonder that too. And maybe you do as well. In this morning's baptism, we were asked, do you put your whole trust in Jesus' grace and love? And we say, yes, I do. Maybe with, with God's help tacked onto it. But then are there not those times when we wonder, does God really love me? St. Paul makes it clear in the book of Romans, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And he knew about that. You may know that he was a zealous Jew, horrified by what he believed was heresy, Jesus promising to be, the, saying he was the promised Messiah, the one who the Jews had been waiting for, had been praying for. And surely this man was an imposter, leading people astray. And now he'd got these disciples, even after Jesus had been crucified, who were willing to follow him, even more so after Jesus' death indeed willing to give their own lives. And Saul was determined to wipe them all out. In the book of Acts, we're told how he stood watching as people were stoning Stephen and then breathing threats and murder against Jesus' disciples. Saul headed for Damascus with the intention of capturing more followers. But if you know the story, as I'm sure many of you do, you know that Saul didn't make it there, at least not directly. He was literally stopped in his tracks and blinded by the light of Christ. And Saul became Paul, now St. Paul, turning as we spoke this morning from the dark into the light. And now he writes so passionately as we read in Romans, because the longing of his heart is that others may know the love of Jesus. He declares with knowledge and conviction that despite hardship and distress and persecution and famine and nakedness and peril and threats of death, nothing, absolutely nothing, could separate him from the love of God. And that's what's offered to each one of us today and every day. When you wake each morning, when you lie in the darkness of the night, God offers you his love. Each hour, and nothing can separate us from that. I want to tell you that there was a time when I didn't believe that. I didn't believe it. I didn't feel much loved, and I certainly didn't believe that a God that I couldn't see would love me. But somehow, God reached me one day in a most peculiar way, really, when I think about it. And sometime I'll share the story with you if I haven't done already. But boy, was I ready. I was ready. And after that, shown the love of God in so many different ways, especially through the people of God. Now, we ain't perfect. We know that. We say and do things sometimes. We hurt each other, not intentionally, but it happens. But the wonderful good news of Jesus Christ is that we can come and say sorry, and hopefully we can say sorry to the ones we may have hurt. And you never know, sometimes we may receive an apology from those who have hurt us. How can we get away from God? We, we can't. There's a Psalm 139, and when I was brand new as a Christian, I found it a little bit intimidating. 
because the psalmist essentially says, there's no way you can go. You can go right up here, you can go right down here, and he is going to be with you. If I go to the farthest heights or to the furthest depths, even there, God is with us. St. Paul calls him the searcher of hearts. He knows where we are. He knows who we are. We know everything. He knows everything we've done, good and not so good. He knows our thoughts. He sees out all that. And yet God stooped to the ground to meet us face to face and gaze at us with eyes of love. I don't know, maybe that seems a bit far-fetched to you. But I read somewhere how praising God and praying with him is us gazing at God as he gazes at us. Can you imagine that? Because that is what we pray for, is it not? When we finally leave this world as George has done, that he will come face to face with Jesus Christ. Now maybe your experience has not really encouraged that image and there's much to discourage it. There are plenty you'd have us believe that it's just an illusion. Look at the evil in the world. How can God let that happen? And the answer to that, Mama, well done. <laughs> he was saying Dada before. I'm glad to see it's evened out here. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Dada, that's right. Well, I don't have any answers. And maybe Henry doesn't, but maybe he will. But recall what St. Paul says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. If you take nothing else with you today, take that promise, because it's true. And Paul isn't sugarcoating life. He knows we're not promised an easy life. There are many, many, many people who are persecuted for their faith. And loving brings pain. It makes us vulnerable. He also knows that no matter how much we love our family and our friends, our children, and even our pets, that's only a glimpse of God's love for us. In him we can trust absolutely. This is the one who we've entrusted Henry to Henry. Yeah, you like Jamie's little doll, don't you? We're very happy with it. And that love is offered to all of us. We just have to choose to accept it. As the hymn writer put it, so amazing, so divine, it demands our soul, our love, our all. It isn't just a little dip in the toe when it suits us. It's saying, maybe, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I give my life to you, Lord. And I pray that on the bad days, you'll help me. At Henry's baptism this morning, He's just one of the best behaved children at baptism. <laughs> you are a star, Henry. You guys made a promise before God, accepting them on Henry's behalf, accepting the love that God offers, accepting and promising to tell the story. They even have this little Jesus storybook Bible. It's great. I bought one for my daughter many years ago. This is a great book. Make sure mum and dad read it to you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> this is yours. Oh, he wants it. Okay. Don't rip it up. Oh, it's a bit heavy. Oh, oh, Henry. It's almost as heavy as that you are. <laughs> it's a story we hear every Sunday. And the reason why we hear it every Sunday is it seems like sometimes we forget. I don't know what happens during those days, but sometimes we forget and we need to be reminded of the story again and again. God is faithful. God is present, present in each new day and every night. Whatever challenges we face, we don't face them alone. I was up at a cottage a couple of weeks ago and when I looked out at the kitchen, 
on the little garage out there was uh, one of those um, things that they attach to people, you know, attached to animals so that they can pull them along. What are they called, Bruce? A yoke. Yoke, thank you. You know those yokes. So you don't carry it alone. And remember that, God, that Jesus said that his yoke was light. And it's like I was looking at it. And I, um, sometimes when I've been praying this week, that image has come to mind. That reminder that we're not on our own. That we don't do this on our own. That he's with us. It's a great image. I love it that it was on there. Just especially when you're washing the dishes and maybe wishing you were somewhere else. I don't know how much he helped wash the dishes. But anyway, there we go. When we feel overwhelmed, when we run out of words, the Spirit of God helps us in our weakness. And maybe you have experienced that too, when you just don't know what to pray. And we're told that the Spirit intercedes for us, gives us the words, maybe even the sounds. The Holy Spirit that was promised by Jesus and then by Peter at Pentecost. And remember how Peter had turned and denied but then in the power of the Spirit, he talked about Jesus for everyone, for everyone. And at baptism, we accept that call. If we are children, that is often made on our behalf, that promise. And Henry has been invited today into the family of the Christian family, which I'm told is well over two billion people throughout the world. That's a big family. That's a big family. But the love of God is not restricted to Christians alone. It is for everyone. And that means me and that means you. And that means the people that maybe you're praying for who will come to know the love of God. For everyone. For everyone. For everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That was the world. Not just this little bit here. And despite the naysayers and our own doubts and weaknesses... Despite our sin and sometimes wondering if it's true, ours, mine, and even some of the most passionate and deeply religious leaders sometimes wonder. But here is the promise. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen.